We're hoping to have a number of routes servicing the Highlands and Islands. Specifically out of Stornoway, we're hoping to serve Bembecula and Barra, as well as the infamous Aberdeen flight that has been absent over the past couple of years. It has been. Um, Eastern Airways, I think it was, had a jolly good bash at it, but uh, uh, I decided to give up for the moment anyway. You think you can do better? It's not necessarily about being better or worse than the competition that's available at the moment. It's about being different. Fly Highland being a not-for-profit, um, our goals are very much structured to moving people effectively and cheaply as possible, while still remaining safe. Um, that's interesting that you mentioned community involvement. How do you see that happening? Well, we want to work with the communities that we serve. Um, we don't just want to be... Um, the transport from A to B. We want to work with local accommodation providers so that when we inevitably carry tourists, they're able to see exactly what there is to do all on the one one website. So at the time of booking, they know exactly who's available. So we really want to encourage economic development for the destinations we serve. But aren't the Highlands and Islands well enough served by Logan here? I do believe that they are served well by the current um, offerings that Logan Air offer. Um, however, we are focusing much more on the cost side of things. So we all know that the air discount scheme um, is available to Islanders and Northern Highlanders as well. Um, we want to exaggerate those savings by lowering the base prices down further as well. It's an expensive business starting an airline. Um, I think even here in the Western Isles, we've we've seen some startups uh, stumbling, uh, as it were, before they were able um, to get into proper operations. Um, how are you going to do it? Well, of course, starting an airline is no easy task. <laughs> Even just the, the legislation that's got to be followed is incredibly complicated. And we are working with a company called Trust Flight to ensure that we are following legislation and safety standards um, as well as we can. We are about to start looking for additional um, members of staff that will be required by law for the air operator certificate and then as a team we will build the air operator certificate from the ground up which includes all of the running documentation of the airline and once we pitch that to the civil aviation authority and um, we'll then be able to look at starting operations we're hoping and um, should all go go according to plan summer 2024 however that is subject to change as we are not for profit fundraising is considerably different so we can't sell shares in order to then pay the shareholders dividends. Um, so we are going to be funded through charitable donations, businesses buying um, advertising subscriptions in advance, and of course, people that just want to, to donate because they believe what we're trying to do is for, for the communities and will benefit them. You didn't mention the government. Will you not be applying for grants from the Scottish government? We are looking to work with the Scottish Government as well as Highland Council and other select councils um, operating uh, public service obligation routes. Um, this is obviously, as I'm sure you're aware, um, routes that are funded by the government, not in full, but they do provide some additional funds to try and make the route more feasible. We believe that some of the routes that are still available at the moment are feasible as standalone, but we want to work with the the governments to try and really get the most out of them that we can. Um, what type of aircraft do you envisage using, Thomas? At the moment, we're envisioning using the Britain Norman Island as they're built out in Romania and final assemblies completed in the south coast of England. Brit they were British built back at the beginning. However, I believe they've moved over to Romania as a cost saving measure. Um, they are 100% British aircraft, though, in quotation marks. Uh, they're twin engines, they carry nine passengers fully loaded. Um, however, we expect to see sort of eight passenger seats filled to just leave a little bit of room for error in, in regards to weight calculations. Um, I know a bit about um, Britain Norman operation being XRAF myself, and I think they were based on oh, yeah. the Isle of Wight, weren't they? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So you know, it's all, it's a Romanian operation now. So. Yeah, so I believe I believe the manufacturing process of the aircraft has moved to Romania, and then they come over to the Isle of Wight for final assembly. Now, I also think, remember, that Logan Air 
um, <laughs> use the Islander and the Trilander. Um, That's correct. Why, um, why should you go back to something that they've moved on from? Well, the business model that we're trying to trying to work with isn't offering aircraft with 34 seats, 56 seats, example. We want to be there for the, for the individuals that really need the, the savings um, that we can provide by operating the smaller, more efficient piston-driven aircraft rather than the, cool go- the, the fuel guzzlers that are uh, jet turbines. Why are you ignoring the poor um, Twin Otter? It can land on the beach at Barra. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we, we can't forget the Highlands and Islands Airport's Twin Otter. Um, we do really like the Twin Otter. As a group, we all, we all really like the, the operation of it. However, with it being an aging aircraft and it no longer being in production, it wouldn't. we don't believe it would be the smartest idea to go for, for an aircraft where parts are, are becoming more and more expensive by the year. All right, okay. So that's just something that Logan Air has to put up with. Yeah, so the, the Twin Otter is actually currently owned by the Scottish government, so I believe um, they look after the operation, uh, the maintenance of the, of the Twin Otter. I could be incorrect, but that, that's my belief at the moment. Okay. Tell us about your own experience. So I've worked in air freights from the age of 16, um, which I'm coming up to five years of experience in that industry now. <laughs> I'm, I've run a business before. I'm managing director of a logistics company. Uh, which was based out of Kinusi. Sadly, we shut our doors back in, that would have been October last year, just due to a multitude of things, but primarily COVID and Brexit uh, took us from both sides and started pulling, um, especially when, as we operated a, an older fleet of vehicles, um, managing to get parts and things from around the world was just uh, becoming a bit of a strain. So we decided to close the doors uh, in 2021. And yeah, Running businesses is, is a good passion of mine. Um, Fly Highland is definitely more on the paperwork heavy side, but uh, I, I love the responses that we've been getting from individuals from around Scotland saying that they, uh, they're looking forward to supporting us in whichever way they can. You mentioned that it's, uh, the model is not for profit. Why don't you want to make a profit? It's not so much about not making a profit. What we want to ensure is that the general public know that money that we make is being reinvested back into the airline and not going into my pocket as much as I as I would like it to because, the, wow, this is challenging and it's taking a lot of time. You know, we've really got to you know remember that our core values are that we want to serve the communities and we're all realistically in this together. So the more we can work together, the better it's going to be for everyone. So you, you said next year... Um is your is your t- time scale you were, you were seeing the end of this year but re- realistically a year 18 months from now realistically about 18 months from now that that's correct we're hoping to have the first flights operating then um, we may be able to start some routes sooner depending on our funding situation and depending if if the demand is there to operate an aircraft on ACMI, which stands for Aircraft Crew Maintenance and Insurance, which is a type of leasing program that means that we'll operate the aircraft, but a different company will actually fly and look after the ownership and insurance of the aircraft. Oh, that's a thing, is it? You, you would have another company actually, actually doing the flying? Yes. So in a, a couple of situations, if we were able to obtain some of the public service obligation routes, um, we would have to initially look at getting a different different operator to come in and fly on our behalf we would still be in charge of pricing and everything that we deem important which is of course making sure we keep the costs as low as possible we work with a company to try and bring costs down as much as we can um, this is something we want to try and avoid if possible just because bringing a separate entity in to fly aircraft um, is not the cheapest option and obviously we wouldn't be able to pass on uh, the savings that what we, we want to uh, somebody was telling me that if there's any would-be investors out there, they can put some money in and they'll get free flights and stuff from you. How's that going to work? Yes. So at the moment, it's a rudimentary um, reward system. It is being worked on. A, a redo is being worked on at the moment. Um, but basically, people that want to invest and put, put money into it, they'll receive what we're calling a Flylander membership, um, which is they'll receive a discount on flights. They'll be able to use our standby system. Our standby system works basically because the islanders are quite 
restricted in terms of weight allowances, as I'm sure you'll know yourself. Mm -hmm. The standby system will work as such. When the aircraft is fully loaded, if there's still weight available on the aircraft, we will allow another an extra person to come on board. Uh, turn up and fly, which is our sort of, the aircraft's leaving in eight hours. Would you like to go? You could look at getting 55% off on select routes. Um, mm -hmm. We're still obviously working on pricing for the routes. Um, we have worked with Britain Norman to get an accurate costing of operating aircraft per hour. So we're using that at the moment to figure out our, our potential pricing structures. And yeah, it basically just gives you a little bit more, more flexibility. You can change your flights for free and get an extra five kilogram bag on board for free. And yeah, it just gives you a little bit more freedom when, uh, when operating, but you receive that when you, when you, when you want to invest at the moment. Um, and we're, we're trying to work on different, uh, benefits for everybody that wants to invest at the moment as well. All right. So, um, uh, and there's also things like GoFundMe and the usual uh, fundraising platforms as well. Um, yeah, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. Mm. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. So I was thinking where to put my spare hundred k. So um, I get free <laughs> flights for a long time if I invest them with you. Yes, as well. well I would say free <laughs> flights. <laughs> Um, you know, it, individuals that want to donate a large amount um, uh, naturally write to us in person. And, you know, we, we are speaking with a couple of people that do want to invest slightly higher than, than the usual amounts, you know, to what we can do with them. And in one case, their, their business as well, because uh, their business uh, model is in the tourism sector. And sorry, their business model could benefit from having access to an aircraft on occasion. Um, so, what about Logan Air? What do they think of your plans? Well, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I haven't spoken to uh, any representatives of Logan Air regarding the plans. Uh, the couple of times I have spoken to Jonathan Hinkles, he has seemed like a very lovely man, um, and I'm sure that he would wish the very best. But um, I have, you know, I have not spoken to Logan Air about the, the current plans and what's going on. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll wait for their comment uh, at some point. Uh, thank you very much, Thomas, for taking the time to tell us about it. It's certainly interesting for us living in the islands because anything that's going to make air travel easier and, of course, cheaper is of interest to us. So we can only wish you good luck to, uh, to you and, and to anyone who, who's looking to give us a bit of choice. Um, uh, in that, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Ian.